what's up guys CP Mod here back with another video now recently we did a showdown between an older i7 and a brand new coffee lake chip and recently I dug up my old i5 and I thought well why not go ahead and give it a test now this particular i5 is an Intel Core i5 750 and well it has been sitting around for quite some time and someone actually wanted it for another build so that's going away but either way I thought why not quickly do some tests and see exactly how it stands up here in 2018. Now yes there is definitely a clear difference between first gen and i5 and the latest generation of i5 which does raise the question is there really that much of a big difference mainly because Intel hasn't really been pushing very hard in the specs department for quite some time. Intel's been pretty content to sort of update the power things make the socket ever so slightly different between different models so is there really that much a difference that we'll notice when it comes to the real world gaming department? But first, let's take a look at the specifications. So for the old school Intel Core i5, which launched back in 2009, almost 10 years ago today, we are based on the 45 nanometer Halen processors offering four cores and four threads. This guy features a 95 watt TDP and a laughable maximum 16 gigs of RAM running at 1333 megahertz. Now there was only support for 16 PCIe lanes at 2.0 speed and 8 megs of cache. Now this guy also too launched back in the day at 193 US dollars which is a far cry from what we have here today, especially if you live here in Australia. Whereas on the flip side today we're looking at the 8600K offering 6 cores and 6 threads and unlock multiplier as the older one did also to offer but this guy's based on the 14 nanometer coffee lake process with the same 95 watt TDP however we're getting more cores and also do more speed. On top of that, we're getting a sweet 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM support, and there's again 16 PCI lanes supported, however, they are the newer 3.0 technology. There's again 9 megs of cache, and this guy will run you 257 US dollars. And once again, if you live in Australia, it is really much more expensive. Now, one interesting thing to note is the core speed. Thanks to the fact that these newer chips are running so much smaller processors, we're actually able to have much higher max boost speeds and also to base clocks with a max boost speed of 3.4 gigahertz on our new chip whereas our old chip could only deliver a 3.2 gigahertz max speed now on paper this isn't really that great but with that being said we can easily push the i7 750 to a easy 4 gigahertz and obviously also to the newer coffee lake chip could even be pushed up to 5 gigahertz however with that being said out of the box there is definitely a difference here on paper and despite the massive age gap there's not exactly too many dissimilar things to each of these chips. Even though again, nine years, they're pretty similar on paper. The same TDP for both of these chips, only two cores difference between the two of them, one mega cache more on the newer chip, and the same amount of PCIe lanes, not to mention the same amount of memory channels. There's a lot of similarities here, but also too at the same time, there's also quite a few differences. However, with that being said, again, this is most likely due to the fact that Intel has really been pushing in recent years years power savings and also to the ability to go with smaller packages than more cores and just raw speed and specs which is what we're starting to see recently with the battle between Intel and also to AMD. With that being said on the flip side there is definitely a few differences between these two chips. Other than the naming being different both of them are i5s but the newer one offers almost double the max speed of the older generation i5. RAM support is also two through the roof with the aforementioned 64 gigs of RAM and the graphics solution on the newer chip is so much better, mainly because the old chip doesn't have a graphics solution. It wasn't until later when the Westmere-based Clarkdale chips came out that we did see integrated graphics. So the testing that we did here today are all going to be on a GPU because we're really not going to be testing the internal graphics capabilities. But with that being said, let's get into those tests that I just did mention. I paired these chips up with the GTX 1080 Ti and here are our numbers. As we can see, actually not too bad. Sure enough, we are running 1080p FPS and we are running 16 gigs of RAM, which is the max amount of RAM for our older chip, and games were definitely playable. Even games that were arguably terribly optimized, such as PUBG, still ran okay, and the older chip itself really did hold its own. Now, yes, I don't exactly have my usual suite of games, and we had a very limited amount of time to actually do these tests, but regardless, with that being said, the games were actually really playable, and then 
numbers were respectable. Though that being said, inside of a vacuum, the old i5 would definitely be pretty good, but if we do compare it again to the latest and greatest chips, in some games we saw as much as a 100 FPS difference between the two different generations. Essentially showing us that yes, the older CPU does unfortunately bottleneck our newer GPU. And on top of that, if you were to overclock both of these chips, you could also to expect to see much better performance out of them. And I guess just looking at the 750 in a vacuum, it actually does really well when paired with something like a GTX 1080 Ti. However, that 1080 Ti is going to be held back and I really think it would be a great sort of a budget put together. If you were to grab something like a 1060 and throw it in, that would be really good. Unfortunately, don't have a 1060 on hand. However, when we compare it to today's numbers and even if we grab something like a mid to low end Ryzen chip, it still delivers much better performance and unfortunately we are a little bit on the bottlenecked side. Pro applications were also too way better over on the i5-8600. However, with that being said, again, I didn't exactly have full time to do these tests, but I do remember back when I used to run a 3570K making these videos that rendering a 4K video would take upwards of four hours for a 10 minute video. So the newer 8600K definitely blows out of the water in productivity and multitasking situations. But let me know down in that comment section if you want to see a full sort of a multitasking test between the latest generation CPUs and some older CPUs. I'll be really interested to see, but let me know if you're also too interested. All in all though, gaming on the older i5-750 was definitely possible and actually really good. Not to mention, a single game did not fall below 60 FPS and actually was pretty good. When comparing this kind of setup to a console, it's definitely going to blow that console out of the water. And sure, we were only really testing in 1080p, but let's face it, most of us are still running 1080p panels anyway, so these numbers are still pretty valid. And seeing that you can pick up an i5-750 for less than 50 Australian dollars and a matching board for around the same price, you can kit out a full i5 and motherboard for less than $100. And that is actually really affordable, taking the change from that and putting it into a much better video card. And again, gaming was definitely totally possible. And if you paired it up with something more mid-range where you wouldn't see such a bottleneck, you would also to see really decent performance. But let me know down in that comment section, were you expecting to see this kind of a gap between the 10 year almost CPU release? And also to let me know down in that comment section if you would consider picking up an older CPU like this and putting that change into buying a better video card thanks to the fact that video cards are really expensive. Otherwise guys, I've left the links to some CPUs and also to motherboards down in that description box if you want to pick up one of these old school CPUs. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.